nice looking. Uh, I mean, probably, probably good. It still looks a little bit crummy. Yeah, this is the main one here, anyways. This hole is the one that we focus more on. Oh, which this hole? This one here. Okay. Now, everyone, the moment of truth. Will the car turn on first start? Here we go. Let's see. Fingers crossed. Three, two. Oh my god! First start! That is mad. Wait, can I rev it? Let's see. Okay, so it still conks out when I try and rev it. Hey guys, a brief update on the Nissan Exa. So practically what's happened with it is we found the issue for the cold starting problem. So the culprit is actually the TPS sensor, the throttle position sensor. It was practically plugged in incorrectly. The wire that's supposed to be giving a voltage of 0.48 volts was actually giving five volts constant, which means that it was plugged in wrong and also not giving the right power. The sensor itself, whenever you moved it, didn't even change the idle at all. So that was a very big indicator that the sensor needed to be rewired. So we got the wires replugged in. It's running a lot better now and it actually starts on cold, but it is still dropping revs as soon as I put foot on the accelerator. It's just choking it out. So that's most likely to do with a vacuum leak. So I'm going to have to look through that at some point. But for now, that is for another date. But today, we got an update to the brakes. As you see here, these are brake rotors and also rear brake setup, which has come off a N14 Triple S. So if you look on the Nissan Exit and also don't mind the plane, but um, right back here, we have drum brakes in the rear, which is basically instead of having a caliper on it that squeezes the brakes from the outside, you've got a drum with like two basically shoes that basically push in and out like a handbrake would so practically i have to replace that with these which are disc rotors which will help give me better braking on the rear but will also mean that i will have uh, upgraded brakes because triple s brakes are a lot bigger and can probably handle a fair bit more power but anyway that's the new upgrade for this week So to do a brake conversion, all you really need is the rear brake setup and you also need the handbrake, which for this one, I managed to pick it up at the same time. We've got a Pulsar N14 SSS uh, rear handbrake setup. So the two handles on it, which I think are the lower arms, are going to have to go in there. And I think those should be long enough, but they may be shorter. So what I might have to do is I might have to replace the arms with the arms on the drum brake and that should should run to it, fairly certain. And then I don't have to actually replace the rear cross member at all from the looks of it. But I have a feeling this piece is probably going to be uh, something I might have to retrofit. Because if I look at it, oh no, never mind. See that bottom bit right there? That bottom bit goes over there, right past it. You probably can't see it. So, it goes right, right there. So, I'm gonna have to line these up. So, it looks like it's gonna be a direct fit. So, so to start off, we're going to be taking off these bolts here. So, I've got my breaker bar and I have a 19 millimeter uh, socket, which is a half inch drive. And as backup, I'm going to use a 19 millimeter ring spanner, which is going to be used for the other side. I think if that fits, come on. If not, I guess I have to go bigger. I guess it's 20. Ah. So 
So, as I suspected, uh, the bolts are pretty seized. So, we're going to be using some WD-40 to clear up the rusted bolts and to get them loose. And then that should hopefully, uh, yeah, that should hopefully make it easier for us. So, let's get that started, shall we? Nah, I am not strong enough for that. So guys, I got some wrenches just because I wasn't able to get out that bolt. I guess today we're going to try and make some progress if I can at least get those bolts off today, do a little bit of um, rust repair and then get the thing ready for priming. I think that should be good progress for today. But we will see how we go because we're kind of running out of time here. One week later. Yeah, just like my... um. My sway bar bolt yesterday. Oh, yeah. Righty tidy, righty tidy, righty loosey. Oh, fuck. oh shit. Ready. Oh, that crunched. Nah, it's cooked. Is it actually cooked? So good news is we got one of them off, but this one is completely cooked, like it's just rusted in there. So likely we're going to need to get that taken to a mechanic to get them to torch it out. And then I can try and fix it from there. One eternity later. Things insane. Fingers crossed the boys have got this. Oh, maybe. Now nah, it's pulling him. <laughs> this is like, this should be like a carnival game. <laughs> Try your might. Nah, it's pulling. Alright, yeah, we'll go the other way. Hand up. On bikes, on like my stoners and shit. Hmm. Bro, let's get fucking stuck in. Best way to do uh, it. No I'm job too small. To so guys, we made it to the end of the video. This is the end of part one of my Nissan Exa brake conversion. I have decided to split this into multiple parts because this is actually one of the biggest projects that I've done on the channel. So to get this far in about three months, which all it really took was removing some rusted and seized bolts, which didn't want to come out. Uh, we are now on to the next part, which is rust converting and also repainting the hubs and then getting the running gear ready to be put on the car. So that'll probably be in the second to third part, but once that's all done, the fun part comes, which is actually road testing the brakes, which will be awesome, but that will come at a later date. Anyway, if you want to see the rest of the progress on the EXA, I do have the playlist at the end of this video, so you are welcome to watch that through. Um, but for now, I'm getting a phone call, so thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.